The great thing with online bookkeeping packages like Xero is that you can give people access to the system. You can give advisors and your support team access at different levels depending on what they need to see and what you want them to have access to so that they can help you with your business. It's simple and straightforward. And in this video, I'm going to explain the different levels of access that you can give people and also show you how you can provide access to your team and supports. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on the bell so you know next time I upload a video about all things business money. I am Annette Ferguson, Chartered Accountant and Certified Profit First Professional, and I run Annette & Co, a UK-based accounting firm. Zero has a number of options when it comes to giving people access to your bookkeeping records. They range from all singing, all dancing access to everything to access to only small parts like the sales invoicing. Let's now look at the different options and which level is best to give access to your accountant and potentially other people in your team as well. So when you log into Xero, what you see initially is your dashboard and in order to give people access, you need to click the drop down at the top and select your settings. Now you probably won't have change organization if you only have one business within zero, but we do because we have access to multiples. And this is a demo organization that we're just working with today. So if we go into settings, and then you can see a section under organizational settings called users. Once we click on there, we can see that at the top right hand side, we have something that says invite a user. So we can click on there. Now we can enter some details of who we want to invite. <clears throat> this person might already be invited as I'm doing this. Now there are various things that you can give people access to. So projects, if you have projects enabled, you can give limited, standard or admin access to. This entity incidentally does not have projects enabled, um, so I can't show you that bit, but uh, payroll is also another one if you want people to have access to the payroll. The main one we're gonna look at though here is the business and accounting, because here is the section that you're gonna give your accountant access to, and typically anybody else in your team you're going to manage through this business and accounting section. So you can see that we have a few different options at the top here. First of all, you can give people invoice only access. So this is the sales and purchases. They can only create drafts or they can do quoting and invoicing. They can only do purchasing. They can approve and pay. You can give them different levels and depending what you select up here will depend on the lower levels of access for invoicing only in this section. So for example, you might want to give people purchases access and give them bank account access or not give them bank account access. You might want to say they can approve and pay and give them bank account access or not. So you can choose the various options in this setting for invoice only. This is a limited role. So this is people who don't need access to reporting. Then you have the standard level of access. This is the kind of day-to-day -day access that somebody in your team might need if they were doing um, some bits of bookkeeping or reconciliations for you. Um, and again, you can choose which levels that you give them. So you can let them also add other users. You can let them file VAT returns or not. You can give them access to review reports or not. And you can tailor it here. The next level of access is advisor level access. This is the level of access that you're going to want to give your accountant or qualified bookkeeper in order to help and support you in your business. Most of the time you're going to want to tick all these boxes for your accountant or bookkeeper because you're usually going to want them to help you in filing VAT returns, and often if you're giving uh, one person in an accounting firm or bookkeeping firm access, you usually will need to give them access to manage users so they can add other people on their team into this zero account so that they can help and support you fully as well. Now there may be an instance where you 
want to give someone read-only access. So only access to reports. Let's say you have a business coach or consultant. Perhaps you want to give them read-only access so they can see the reporting, but they cannot see the details and they cannot, well, sorry, they can see the details, but they cannot change anything within your system. They can see things though, and that might be, as I say, applicable for somebody who's a coach or consultant who's coming to your business who needs to review things. So once you've selected the appropriate level, then you can hit send invite. You can add a personal message in there to the person as well. So once you send the invite, you'll see that the person will come up as a pending user and will have the various bits of um, levels that you have said that they can have. Now if you do that and you decide that you don't want them to have access or you've done the wrong permissions, you can click these three dots and change them there, either remove access or go back and change the permissions that they have been given. You can do that incidentally for anyone that currently has access to your system. So let's say that you change accountants or bookkeepers, you can go in with these dots and remove your previous accountant or bookkeepers access. Or if someone leaves your business, you can take them out here in this section as well. So if you're getting value from this video, do make sure that you hit that like button. So what does it mean when you actually give someone advisor level access to your zero account? Well, a user with advisor level role access can access bank accounts and reconcile transactions, create invoices, quotes, purchases, and purchase orders, access and manage inventory, contacts, and fixed assets, run and publish reports, including management reports and reconciliation reports, set and change lock dates, edit transactions in bulk, enter manual journals, adjust fixed asset settings and run depreciation schedules, access all of the organization's settings, file non-MTD VAT returns, or if you tick that box, they can also file MTD VAT returns, and use the assurance dashboard to monitor the integrity of your data. So you can see this is a long list to provide your accountant with, but this is also a vital part of their job. And therefore they do need access to all of these different elements within your zero account in order to do their job properly. And if you're struggling with the accounting for your business, I would love to help. Do reach out to us at yt at anetandco.co.uk and let us know how we can support you. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.